What caused you to laugh during someone's funeral? My grandma wasn't a very nice person. Full on narcissist. My mom's hilarious lifelong best friend had a bit of a hard time coming up with a kind yet truthful eulogy. She somehow worked in my grandma's ponchant for saying this is the sickest I've ever been every time she had a cold or a hangnail. My mom, sister and I all lost it. Loudly. This time it was, indeed, the sickest she had ever been. The priest went to the bathroom during the eulogies. He forgot to turn his little microphone off. I knew my grandfather, the deceased, would have been laughing his butt off. At my sister's funeral my stepfather commented that if she could see herself now, she'd just die. Then at my granny's funeral, there was a misprint on the flyer thing that said she died a year before she actually did. My dad commented that she looked great for having been in an open coffin for so long. Probably not that funny really, but both times we laughed our asses off. A little gallows humor can help release some tension. We had my aunt cremated and during the wake we were discussing having her ashes put into a piece of jewelry for her mother. My dad, aunt's brother, decided that it'd be the perfect time to comment that they'll have to be bloody careful unless they want to vacuum my sister out of the rug. I was so close to wetting myself with laughter. Sometimes a little dark humor can really make your day. About 10 years ago, I was at my wife's grandmother's funeral. Small rural farming town. The funeral was in the quintessential small town funeral home, and presided over by the preacher in a tiny Baptist church. Mullets abounded. Anyhow, during the sermon that we were all sitting through, this preacher was gearing up toward an altar call, in building momentum. He was describing her life, and when he got to the point of her death, he described it thusly, comma when her pulse pulsed its last pulse. I have no memory of what was said directly before or after, but I looked at my wife, she looked at me, and we glanced around at the rest of her family, who were all trying to keep the laughing at bay. For the rest of this service we did all we could not to laugh, and only had moderate success. We got strange looks from the locals wondering who these rubes were laughing at a funeral of all places. My wife and I still bring it up from time to time. I never thought I'd hear the word pulse used for so many different parts of speech in a single sentence. My sister's stomach growled loud enough for me to hear from two people away at my husband's grandma's funeral. We both laughed out loud. Thankfully it was just our small family so no harm done. Grandma would have laughed too. OMG that happened to me at a solemn Christmas concert at the pause just after the crescendo. Everyone in the goddamn row looked at me and I busted out laughing sorry Jesus. An older man came into the funeral late, with his wife. It was obvious he couldn't hear well. He started yelling to his wife about stuff during quiet prayers and silent moments. Thinking he was whispering. I don't even remember what he was saying. Just the fact that he was so loud was hilarious. It was my grandfather's funeral. My cousin and I could not stop laughing. Which made us laugh harder. It was a funny service for a guy known for making people laugh. When the guy learned he was terminal. Brain cancer. He had written letters for his brothers, best friend, and wife to read at the service. I don't remember it word for word, but first line of the best friend's letter letter was something like if you are reading this letter, then I am dead. Bummer. I bet. Wife's name. Did it. One of his brothers was in seminary school to be a preacher and hidden a few paragraphs into his note was hairy penis. Ha. Huh, you have to say that because it's in a dead guy's note. It's the law. Look it up. There were lots of stories, jokes, and celebration of the dude's life, and, at his request, there was an open bar. The service, obviously, was not religious in nature. Two people got into a fight in the parking lot after the service. His executor then told everyone that his wishes were that the first two people to fight at the service were to receive medals he had custom made. The medals were inscribed with something like I was in Bartolat, guy's name, S Funeral 2009. I wish I had the kind of friend group where I could count on two people getting into a fight at my funeral. I came so close to laughing at my wife's father's funeral. It was a Jewish funeral and the rabbi was going to blow the shofar, that Ramzorn thing, and he talked about what it was going to symbolize and all, but he pronounced shofar exactly like shofar so I was just picturing him talking about how he was going to blow a shofar and it was going to be so beautiful and meaningful, so that had me on the edge. 
But then when he actually blew the thing he was really bad at it and it was the most comical nudly squeaky farty sound that I came really, perilously close to cracking up. If I had, I might not be married today. Back in 2007 my friends and I were going through that pop punk against the establishment kind of scene phase. Well when my best friend took his life in late 2009 his parents decided to play a montage music video of his life. Well the band they decided to use was a Nickelback CD they found in his room. I couldn't hold it back. I started to laugh uncontrollably. Once I stopped laughing I couldn't tell whether his family didn't really know who their son was or was my friend a secret Nickelback fan. This wasn't at the funeral but at the luncheon afterward. The daughter of the deceased came to our table and asked how everyone was doing. My schoolmate said, oh, alive and well. I spit the coffee out of my mouth. Everyone else was silent as I dying from laughter. The kid's face was beat red from embarrassment. In a desperate attempt to salvage the situation, obligatory note, I'm totally speaking for myself though. It was my grandfather's wake, not funeral, but I think it still counts. My grandma had Alzheimer's that was getting worse and worse. Everyone was going through the line saying their goodbyes to my grandfather in his casket. Don't know who it was but after one couple had said their goodbyes, they stopped to say hello to my grandma. They asked her how she was doing and she replied, I'm doing great, but you should see Tom. He's not doing so hot and gestured with her thumb towards his casket. She was so sweet and literally had no idea he had passed away. I know it sounds sad but her, unknowing, humor lightened all of our moods and we died laughing. That poor couple. Ah fan I answered. My grandpa died when my daughter was about 6. She was sitting on her dad's lap during the service. The minister said the old ashes to ashes. Dust to dust line. My daughter whispers the rest of the timeless Spongebob quote. We lay a big head in the earth's crust. My husband, son, and I all lost it and were shaking in near silent laughter. As close to silent as we could muster. Anyway. Still the funniest thing I've ever witnessed at a funeral. At my close friend's funeral his parents asked everyone to submit pictures for a slideshow that would play throughout the evening. Someone handed in a screenshot from his snapchat of him shirtless, covered in brown sauce, with the caption sweet and spicy boy. I laughed and then I sobbed lol. I miss him very much. I have laughed louder than I supposed to. Comma sweet and spicy boy. A friend of mine from elementary school died a few years ago and I happened to be in town during his funeral. He was an aspiring stand-up comedian and very popular in the Chicago comedy circuit. So they had 4-5 of his best comedian friends deliver the eulogies. And they all told hilarious stories about him. I thought I was going to be so sad at one of my best friends from elementary school dying. But I ended up smiling throughout nearly the whole service. We were only 16 and it was a classmate. Very tragic. When I went up to the casket I noticed her parents chose to bury her with all of her favorite things including her phone and an I love boobies bracelet on her wrist. I leveled to where I was kneeling. It made me chuckle. And with all of the emotions I ended up being unable to stop laughing for the remainder of the service. The priest farted. It was my great grandmother's funeral. And the last thing she ever told me way that she was happy she had her own room in the care facility so I could fart as much as I want. And man, I let out some real corkers. I was with my dad then, and next to him at the funeral. I don't believe in God, but when that priest let the good tunes fly, it's the closest I've come. Let the good tunes fly, I am using that. After my Mills funeral we were waiting behind the hearse for quite some time wondering what the delay was. After a while the hearse driver came back to the family's car and let us know that the hearse had a dead battery and would need to be jumped. Rural Georgia. While we waited I said, if anyone would be late to her own funeral it would be Pam. Everyone had a good laugh at that. At my mother's funeral, my daughter was about 6 years old. The pastor asked the rhetorical question about do we know where we go when we die? My offspring replied yes. I do at the top of her voice. My niece, about 9 at the time, leans in and whispers to my daughter. My daughter then replies, oh yay, my inside voice. Sorry, just as loudly. Everyone, including the pastor, laughed out loud. My mother would have too. That's adorable. My son once pointed at one of the stations of the cross. Number 3. 
during midnight mass and loudly exclaimed that Jesus, he died. The love of my life committed suicide almost three years ago. N was young, handsome, accomplished, hilarious, and so so loved, and his visitation was packed with literally hundreds of people coming to say goodbye. Before the eulogy began we all crowded into a too small room and his twin brother asked for a moment of quiet before he played a song N had loved. I don't know how, I don't know why, but from somewhere, at that exact moment of silence, some mix a lot sire like big butts came blaring through the room. The wave of laughter that rolled through us was exactly what we needed, and we laughed until we sobbed. N had the best sense of humor and always found the absurd hilarious. If he could have planned his own funeral, he without a doubt would have planned something like this. He was also never shy about appreciating a nice butt, and since I'm kind of known for mine I've got to admit that that song playing at that exact moment still feels in the weirdest way like a small wave goodbye from him. We never figured out where that song came from. It didn't come through the speakers of the funeral home, and no one has ever admitted to playing it as a joke, but I'm so grateful to the universe for giving so many of us a small, happy memory in the midst of so much sadness. This is my favorite one here. Thanks for posting it. My husband's cousin died young. He was known as a great practical joker. During the eulogy, my brother-in-law's phone went off with a clucking chicken ringtone. Caller it unknown. Phone on silent. Never had set that ringtone. One final laugh. Cousin Danny. At my uncle's funeral my son, who was four at the time, said good thing uncle matt isn't still fat when the pallbearers gathered around the caskets to carry him out uncle matt was pretty overweeked most of his life but started losing weight when my kids were little they had never seen him fat and were surprised to see all of the old photos of him where he was overweight so i guess that's where it came from his widow was really nice about it she laughed and said i guess that is a good thing isn't it this one is kind of funny and kind of sad Kathy, a friend of both me and my wife, got married after a 10 year engagement. She died 3 weeks later in a car wreck. We had the wedding and the funeral in the same month in the same church. Anyway, during the wake, my wife is sitting in a chair and I am rubbing her shoulders. People are coming up and apologizing to my wife, who men knew was her best friend. But one woman starts coming up to me and apologizing profusely. I say thank you. But then she starts to go on about how it was such a shame my bride died so young. I froze. She had mistaken me for the husband. As she is apologizing. Her eyes kept shifting between my eyes and my hands on another woman's shoulders. She had a kinda sorta disgusted look on her face. She must have thought I was being horribly disrespectful. I should have corrected her. But I just kept thanking her for the condolences. My wife had tensed. Silent. Also realizing what happened. When the woman stepped away, I had to step outside and I just burst out laughing crying at the absurdity of the situation. At least no one saw that. My friend's dad died of liver failure after years of alcoholism. He was Scottish and used to sing ye canny push ye granny off the bus all the time. So it was played at his funeral. Unfortunately, he used to only sing the first verse, so they were unaware that the second verse goes ye can push ye drunken uncle off the bus. That song's great, but nobody ever sings past the first verse. There's a lot of people you can push off the bus in that song, including your other granny. Bit unfair on her, but that song's a fun memory from my childhood. My best friend died in November. Before the funeral I was at my best friend's house with his family and his dad said I could say something at the funeral if I wanted. He said, you don't have to tell me now just at the funeral if you want to say something you can. I just told him okay. At the funeral I remember his brother and uncle spoke about him. After them I felt I should go up and say something about my best friend. I had nothing planned the speech just came from the heart. I remember seeing his mom smile as well as hearing everyone laugh when I said in the speech he was a genius. But I'd never tell him that it was a special moment for everyone and remembering who he was. What a beautiful story. I'm sorry for the loss of your beloved friend. My husband and I were attending the funeral of a mutual friend. He's not good at these kinds of things. When it's our turn to talk to friends parents, husband shakes friends dad's hand and says, sorry about that loss. It came out sounding like someone lost a ball game, not their child. 
and it wasn't at all funny but I immediately almost lost it. There was a lot of suppressed snickering on my part while he and I stood in a corner together after, and I couldn't get my crap together so we left pretty quickly. I can just see that happening. At my grandpa's funeral, my cousin's 80 year old grandma leaned over to me and whispered, whenever I start getting sad at funerals, I like to sing the song wipe out in my head, and then she started singing the guitar part. I was raised orthodox, and back in my home country funerals are the best opportunity for babushkas to show off how religious they are and how they know all the traditions. That being said, at my dad's funeral there was one neighbor babushka who was trying to prove how pious she was by singing the bible verses extremely out of tune and louder than the priest. She legit sounded like a chihuahua. Both my mom, the widow, and I were in tears because of her and, while I usually managed to keep an okay poker face. My mom just lost it, I had to sort of hug her and pretend to cover her crying to make people think she was sad, in order for us to not look like total psychos. Another story was at a great uncle's funeral when I was 14 and my little cousin, 12 or so at the time, started laughing hysterically because the dead uncle had cotton wadding in his nose. At that same funeral, my phone started ringing with my chemical romance in the vigil chapel. And I think most people in the room understood what mama, we all go to heck meant. When I was one week shy of my 21st birthday I got a phone call saying one of my best friends from middle high school had been killed in a car accident in California. She was from southern California and had moved to Vegas in middle school, then moved back before our junior year. Because of that she had a lot of Vegas friends and Cali friends. Myself and three friends drove to Cali for her funeral. It was well known how much this girl loved pink. Pink everything. She would always tell us that we had to wear pink to her funeral. Everyone did. Pink and black. Even the pastor wore a pink tie. So that was our first chuckle. Afterward, all the kids went to a bar on the beach to remember her. I was the only one not 21 yet. So I had to sneak in the back. Second laugh. Then we went to her beach for a bonfire. She loved the beach. If you didn't know where to find her, you could find her at this beach. We all brought markers and wrote little messages for her on a huge rock by the ocean. They've probably been washed away by now. We all sat around this fire telling stories and sharing more laughs and a lot of tears. Somebody swore they saw dolphin out in the water. Dolphins were her favorite animals. That was one of the saddest and best vacations I've ever had. Rest in peace Jenny. That's an absolutely beautiful way to celebrate your friend's life. When I was about 5 my maternal great grandmother died. Shortly before the funeral, my mother asked me if I wanted to be a pallbearer. I didn't know what on earth a pallbearer was, so I just said yes. But a few minutes later, right in the middle of the eulogy, I loudly asked my mother, what's a polar bear? I considered it a valid question and didn't understand why nearly everyone in the room started laughing. But when I look back, I laugh along with them. Bless her heart but my aunt sang for both my grandparents funerals and it was horrible. And the subtle crap I'm trying not to laugh side glances my sisters and I would give each other made it impossible to not laugh so we had to pretend we were crying d. Comma subtle crap I'm trying not to laugh side glances my sisters and I would give each other. I think this is probably the biggest thing only children miss out on. The amount of times my brother and I have given each other a side eye in church so we could laugh about it outside is too high to count. As is tradition in my country, a snack, mini pizza bread filled with lamb meat, tomato and onions, and then folded in half, is handed out at funerals. My uncle, who I didn't know very well passed away, I was on food duty, an old lady was leaving, she asked if she could take two of these snacks. I told her she was only allowed to take three. She totally believed me and with a serious face took three. I almost chuckled. My best friend died the Saturday before last. We just had his funeral Friday. We all cracked up so many times telling stories about him. It was so great to remember him and be able to smile. I think he would have loved it. Catholic ceremony, the priest holds up the small plate sized Eucharist and proclaims the body of Christ then he breaks it in half. This is his cut in eighths like a pizza, but he doesn't continue breaking it up. He takes half of it flat on his hand, holds his hand in front of his mouth, and uses his other hand to push it in and chokes. I lost it. What? 
During my uncle's funeral, the priest came by each of us at the front to shake our hands. He came to me, shook my hand, and said sorry for your loss. Young man, I'm a girl, had short hair at the time, and I was wearing a black suit for women but it was similar enough to my brother's that it must have caused the confusion. I could barely hold it together and full on laughed when my brother elbowed me in the ribs and laughed too. Felt bad for our man, who probably thought we weren't taking the day seriously, but it was too funny. During a moment where each of us approached the coffin to pay our last respects the priest put his bible down on top of a button that closed a curtain that trapped several people in. I kept thinking of that Simpsons bit where Mr. Burns needs a new curtain hole for his sinister entrance. I'm Buddhist and we sometimes set up a sacred fire. Our priest forgot to turn off the smoke alarm. Funniest ceremony ever. The jokes people told and the memories we relived of our friend. There was much laughing. If any thinks laughing at a funeral is bad, I would hate to have been a part of that person's life or family or circle of friends. <laughs> Dad sighed. Before my great uncle died he and grandma talked about his funeral etc. He was very ill, and he said to put his ashes in that, pointing to your shoebox, then dump him in the park. So we did, but being the ashats we are, his kids, my parents and us all have a dark sense of humor. On this windy day we joked about how we hoped there wasn't a birthday party downwind. We passed one going to the chosen spot if I recall correctly. And if there was, does it count as being born again if the kids ate accidentally ash cavendered cake and so on. Even to the point of oh no little Jimmy, don't eat their powdered uncle jokes. Grandma actually laughed and he would have found it hilarious. But both my parents families never take anything seriously. When my grandpa was ill all he wanted were Taco Bell crunch wraps. Husband and I would smuggle them to him when we were back home visiting. When he died I made my dad take me to Taco Bell before the funeral and we got him a crunch wrap. It was buried with his ashes. There was no way to fit it in the ammo can that his ashes were in. So here is the entire family putting heartfelt letters and little mementos in the hole on top of the ammo box. And then me putting a freaking Taco Bell crunch wrap. Complete in bag with napkins and sauce packets. Then taking a photo to prove to Hubs as he couldn't make it back to the US for it due to work. We all still laugh about the smuggled Taco Bell. So it's all good. Taking the photo got the most laughs. Had to prove he got that last crunch wrap. Mum sighed. Grandfather's funeral was a constant okay but who needs to take a calming walk. Then looking around to see who still had some pot. When it was time to drive to the cemetery my second cousin had just cracked open a beer and asked who was riding with him to hold said beer when he had to turn. Our great grandpas everyone was asking okay but who are the lesbians? Why are they making out by the casket? And are they even related to us followed by Fricket, who has some pot left? It's time for a walk. Classy as Frick. Funerals are always a weird comedy in our families. Bonus. Father-in-law's funeral. As we are leaving the creme mill had them play always look on the bright side of life but his entire funeral was funny and horribly sad at the same time. As the priest said, he could never be accused of wearing down the pews. But if they needed to be repaired he would be the first one to volunteer. All were amazing men who taught me so much. They always made us laugh. So was fitting that things went pear shaped or purposely funny. After they lowered my step cousin's brother into his grave. A few of us friends were standing in a friendly circle chatting. My friend yells what the frick that my car as someone who just closed his. My friends. Car door like he was stealing something. A couple hours later at the wake we are at a table and suddenly he's struck by what really happened and says I left my lights on. The guy was turning my lights off. Once the rest of us caught up our whole table laughed till we cried. It was odd in that setting but very much needed. Typing it doesn't do it justice. You had to be there. There was a section in my grandfather's funeral where people were asked to yell out words that described him. People were yelling words like kind, generous, thoughtful act. Then my 80 year old grandmother yelled sexy I don't know if a room of mostly retired practicing lawyers and judges had ever laughed that hard before. My ex uncle in law knew he was dying and created a powerpoint slideshow for us to remember him by. At one point he had a picture of him and Jesus and it was cute and sweet and we all laughed. He put some other pictures up that were funny memories. He should have lived and his horrendous brother in law be taken instead. He did such good and had 3 grandkids he never got to meet. Well that escalated quickly. 
My grandfather passed away, his name was Richard, everyone called him Dong. At his funeral the pastor said as the years passed on, it got hard for Dong. And Dong stopped coming he was referencing his attendance at church. I burst laughing out loud and was truly scowled at by all the other family members. Still laugh about it frequently. That's incredible. My cousin had died Christmas day and had the funeral a few days later. My dad wanted to give a eulogy which he showed to the priest and the priest said no. He later told it at the family get together and the last line of the eulogy was, and I get all your Christmas presents the whole room lost it. While we didn't laugh out loud, we probably looked ridiculously emotional. The priest sounded just like the priest from The Princess Bride. When I noticed my husband's shoulders moving up and down out of the corner of my eye, I knew exactly what he was thinking. We were avoiding eye contact so as not to lose any more composure. It took everything not to burst out in laughter. Just like Catholic grade school mass, the harder we tried to withhold the laughter the worse it got. The tears were running down our cheeks. There we were at our friend's funeral, shaking and crying, but for all the wrong reasons. I had to look that up but it was totally worth the effort. Lucky for you there is no wing ceremony at a funeral. Not me but my partner's brother. It was their grandmother's funeral. In the memorial handouts it mentioned she was survived by her children who were listed. His brother was reading the names and asked them mid-funeral, how come I've never met Uncle Aaron? My partner and his sister absolutely lost it. Aaron was their dad. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.